In this video, I'm going to show you how to perform the quick sort algorithm on these eight numbers. And we're going to sort them into ascending order. As we go, I am going to track how many comparisons there are in each pass. So each pass is each once through the algorithm. Okay. So once I go on to my next line, I've got my completed next line, that is the first pass done, and then I can register how many comparisons there have been. So we're registering the number of comparisons in the same way as we were looking at uh, the bin packing uh, when we were considering the complexity. So how does the quicksort algorithm work? Well, it relies on pivots. And we use the first number in each sublist to be the pivot. Now, what does that mean in the initial case? Well, it means that I'm going to choose 4 as the pivot. And I circle the pivot. Now, different people have different ways of writing this down. Some people will underline it. Some people will put... Um, um, maybe two lines either side. I have seen that before, but I find that quite confusing. I will use circles to represent the pivot. Okay, So, uh, the pivot that's being used. So I said it had to be the first number in a sublist. Well, our sublist is just the whole list at the moment. So 4 becomes the first pivot. So what we're going to do is we are now going to write reorder the list where any number that is less than 4, because we're going into ascending order, any number that is less than 4 must go to the left of 4, and any number that is, to the, is larger than 4 goes to the right. Now, you need to be very careful when you do this, because you must not change the order of the numbers as they appear in this list. Okay, now what do I mean by that? Well, I know that 3, 1, and 2 are less than 4, so they have to go to the left of 4, but they must go in that same order, 3, 1, 2. Do not accidentally reorder them as 1, 2, 3. So 3, 1, 2, and then we'll have the 4. Now, because the 4 has now been used as a pivot, I now box it instead of putting a circle around it. The boxing identifies that I have used that as a pivot. Okay. Any number that is larger than 4 needs to go to the right of 4, but must maintain the same order. So we have 7, 6, 5, 8. 7, 6, 5, 8. So that was the first pass. How many comparisons did I make? Well, that's not immediately obvious, but I would have had to have compared 4 with 7, 4 with 3, 4 with 1, 4 with 2, 4 with 6, 4 with 5, and 4 with 8 in order to put them in that order. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 comparisons had to be made. Right, so we go on to the next pass. So what we do is we circle the first number in each sublist. Now, it's a little bit clearer here that this is a sublist, the 312, so 3 gets circled here. And over here, we've got this other sublist, 7658, so the 7 gets circled there. OK. Now, the 4 remains precisely where it is. It's used up. OK, that will remain boxed. So, any number that is less than 3 goes to the left of 3. We've got 1, 2, so that goes to the left of 3, and it has to maintain that order. And the 3 goes there, and because we've used it, it has to be boxed. Here, any number that is less than 7 has to go to the left of 7, so that's 6 and 5. The 7 must go there, it is boxed because it's been used, and the 8 goes there. Right, we now have, that was the, sorry, that was the second pass. I should count the number of comparisons, shouldn't I? So we compared 3 with 1 and 2, and we compared 7 with 6, 5 and 8. 
So one, two, three, four, five comparisons were made. Okay, so we now have three sublists. We've got this one, this one, and this one. This one only has one number in it. That's fine, okay? But eventually, all numbers should be boxed. That is the target. So one is the first number in that sublist, so that gets, uh, that gets picked as the pivot. Then six gets picked as the pivot, and eight gets picked as the pivot for that sublist. Okay, so one will remain fixed in position. It's now boxed because it's been used as a pivot. We've got the two, the three remains, the four remains. The five is going to go to the left of six because it's smaller than six. Six has been used up, so that's boxed. Seven is boxed already, and the eight is now boxed. How many comparisons were made? Well, one had to be compared with two. That's one comparison. Six needed to be compared with five. That's two comparisons. But the eight was not compared with anything. Okay, So there were still only two comparisons on the third pass. Now we've got two sublists here. But they're both of size one. So that gets circled. That gets circled. So there's nothing to compare two with. So that gets boxed now. Three... Four, five, six, seven, and eight. So on the fourth pass, how many comparisons did I make? Well, I didn't need to compare two with anything, and I didn't need to compare five with anything. So there were zero comparisons on the final pass. So once there were zero comparisons, we are done. Okay? And so this list is now in ascending order. So that is an example of how we use the quicksort algorithm.